Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. You asked for an Ender 5 Max review based on that last video where I was kind of talking about just a bunch of different printers and it's been performing good enough and I think it has a very specific use case that I think it warrants its whole own video. So today we're talking exclusively about the new Ender 5 Max. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is the Ender 5 Max, another 3D printer that Creality kind of just willed into existence like the original Ender 5 Plus. They seem to do that with the Ender 5 series. They don't really like make big announcements. It wasn't advertised like the K1s and the K2s and the K1C or whatever, but here it is. And honestly, initial impressions, it's a pretty cool printer. Currently sitting at $800 online and I know saying the price of 3D printers made in China right now is absolutely crazy and all over the place. They're up, they're down, they're back up, they're back down. So right now as I'm filming this video, it is $799. It could change tomorrow, but that, that's it. It's not a bad price. This is a 400 by 400 by 400 millimeter build plate. It is a very, very large printer. It is an Ender 5 Plus, just bigger. Featuring a nice big build volume, it has dual Z axis lead screws. Now it has four lead screws, but they're actually driven off of one belt on each side. So there's a stepper motor here driving these two and a stepper motor over here driving the other two. It has a linear um, X axis, Y axis. X-axis rail, I always get them confused. Has a linear rail on the X-axis, which makes it very, very strong, reliable, very nice and accurate. Has a nice touch screen. It's using the same firmware kind of system that the K1s and the K2s are using. I'm a big fan of this new updated firmware and user interface on the uh, Creality machines. It's just easy to use, very laid out very nicely, and I like it. It allegedly can print up to 700 millimeters a second, a big old asterisk right there because it depends on your print. Depends on how fast you're printing the quality. Yes, at some point, at some time, did it do 700 millimeters a second in the perfect environment? Yes. However, if you're printing higher quality stuff, you're trying to max it out, that's automatically gonna get slowed down, certain layers, detail quality, whatever. But it is still a very fast printer. 1000 watt heat bed, um, it heats up very quickly when it's going through its leveling sequence and all of that. The only caveat to this printer, it is the first printer I've had to build in quite a while. It doesn't come out of box like a lot of the new machines. I did have to actually assemble it, which is fine. It took about 10, 15 minutes. Creality is very good with their instructions lately, uh, color pictures, and I think you can QR code scan it. So you don't have to worry about that. Very easy to put together. I'd say from having the inbox, about half an hour until you're actually running your first like prints and leveling sequence. Now a note about the bed heating. Creality did issue a recall for the power supply on this. And from what I can see on Reddit, they issued just a complete swap. You could send the printer back, they'll send you a new one, they'll cover the fees, but it was only with an affected batch. And apparently they have been able to track exactly what batch that is. You just give them your order number. They emailed me personally about it. They said my batch wasn't affected, but I do want to bring that up. If you do have an under five max, you're having some weird anomalies anomalies with the bed heating, definitely kick them a ticket. They seem like they're swapping them out, which is a great response to a recall. They're not you know, brushing it under the rug. If you did have a issue with your Ender 5 Max, now we're in the future, and you're having trouble getting hold of Creality about it, leave a comment down below. If enough, I'll, I'll take a screenshot of all of them and kick them into my Creality rep, be like, hey, fix this. But so far, it seems like they're responding pretty nicely to it. While we're talking about the bed, it is a new epoxy resin heated bed or like a, a flexible bed. I don't want to break the print off yet. Oh, yep, there we go. It feels pretty similar to some other build plates, but apparently it means better adhesion at 45 degrees as opposed to 60 degrees. I think there is a bad trade off there personally, because yes, now you don't need to use as much power to heat the bed at 45. This is an open air printer. There's no enclosure. It's bleeding heat from the printer constantly. Comparatively to an enclosed printer, like the K1 Max, the K2 Max, the bamboos, yes, they are gonna be a little more expensive, but as they heat up, they're gonna heat that whole chamber. Not an active chamber heating, but all that heat is gonna stay in that chamber, meaning the bed isn't meaning the bed isn't gonna need to continuously pump out heat. This being open air, that heat is just leaching into the air. So yes, it's using less power. It could use less power running only 45 degrees compared to 60, but it's gonna be heating more. So I'd really love to see some type of comparison where somebody encloses this printer and looks at the power draw compared to, you know, non-enclosed or 60 versus 45. There's definitely some math that this seems more like a teaching tech, um, you know, kind of video, but yeah, it is using less power, but exponentially you're gonna be using more, the same amount of power, if not more, 
over the long term because it's not enclosed. Speaking of enclosure, apparently there is an enclosure offered for this. Here is the only photo I could find of it on the Ender 5 Max page. It's not for sale yet. I can't find anything on the internet about it. Eventually they should be releasing one. And this thing would thrive off of an enclosure. Just box it up and then you'd have to have a little bit of a stack here so the, so the cable doesn't get caught. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like for a hundred bucks in a Lowe's trip, you can enclose this thing pretty easily. There is a cool little thing here. Is it on this side? There is a light here that turns um, green, yellow, and red, depending on if it's printing, if it's on standby, if it has a fault mode. I've seen this on Prusa printers. I've seen this on the new Bamboo H2D. So it gives you just a little indicator light. It's just a little feature that I think is kind of neat. It has a little LED bar in the front and it always scares me every time I'm going to move the printer or remove a print, I'll put my hand here and then the light goes out. So I think it's flickering. You're probably gonna do it too, whatever. And while it doesn't have its own dedicated camera, you can buy an upgraded camera from Creality. It's like their HD camera. I guess you just put it on the corner and maybe it integrates with Creality print. I don't know. I don't know where you would plug it in or if it's controlled through Wi-Fi. However, you can send prints wirelessly, just like the entire K series and some of the Ender, new Ender series, the threes. You can remote control it from Creality Print. There's Again, there's no camera, but you can just send prints wirelessly, which is great. No more walking the USB stick back and forth. As for the extruder, uh, it is the newer upgraded style extruder that's on the K2s and the K1 Maxes. It is a very reliable extruder so far. Haven't had any issues. It comes apart, has that cool little lock at the top for you to you know, pull the filament in and out. When I swap filament on this, I never, I feed it through the tube, but I always remove the tube anyway. I unlock and lock and pull the filament out and manually do it. It's just a comfort thing. Yes, there is a feature to extrude and unlock load on it. Um, that's totally up to you. But so far, it's been pretty reliable. Runout sensors worked a couple times. Like I've had some runouts and continuations. So I like this new hot end and extruder system. It is a beefy one, has a lot of fans for cooling, obviously. And uh, yeah, it's been working great. Now, as for the cons right out of box, obviously, like I said, it is open air. It is going to bleed heat. And also because it's an open air printer, it's loud. It's it's not like a loud printer, but I'm so used to the enclosed Core XYs now. Having an open air printer that's actually going wee -oo, wee -oo, it is a little jarring. Um, where I could have like the Prusa Core One or you know some of the bamboos in the same room as me if I was filming or working. Literally, I have them sitting right there working. If this was on in that corner, you would absolutely be hearing it through my microphone. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, I'm sure if you get an enclosure, it'll cut down on the noise. But with that, like a lot of the modern printers, it does have different speed modes. You can adjust on it, go into silent mode, which is 50% print speed or normal. And then I don't know what it's called on Creality. Here's a photo of it, but basically like sport mode and ludicrous mode, like on the bamboos, but they just call it something else. Maybe they call it the same thing, but I think it's something else. But you can speed it up and or slow it down to make it a little quieter. So that's the printer in a nutshell. So let's just talk about how it's been working for me and the prints I've gotten off of it. All right, so the prints off of this thing, um, it only comes with one stock print. It's just a scraper. It came out nice, I guess, with the stock little white filament that they give you. So that's cool. And then I sent the obligatory Flexi Rexy. Came out great. I wanted to see how it did with just normal details. And honestly, this looks exactly how it would look on like a smaller Ender or any of my other printers. It was standard quality. I wasn't shooting for the moon here. I just wanted to know its little print in place on a 400Q printer handled it perfectly. And he's just a cute little guy. Look at him. And then, well, it's a big printer, so we printed big. I went and maxed one out across the build plate, 400 cubes, and again, handled it really well. The top layering and the uh, I didn't have ironing on, but just the top layering came out really, really nice. And let me throw a little bit of extra light on that. Yeah, look at that. This came out very, very nice. Links, overhangs, all wonderful. And at some point I printed this vase. I don't know if it was before or after the Flexi Rexy. You guys saw it in that other video, but it came out very nice and very strong. Some weird artifacting on it. And I don't know if that was just the model. We'll blast some light on that so you guys can see that. But uh, I mean, I still think it came out really, really nice. It's really strong, really good layer adhesion on these. Yeah, no notes. All right, now things that aren't stock prints or stuff you don't care about. Now, if you're watching me, you're watching my channel, it's probably because you want to print big. You're looking at a 400 cube printer. So how does it do on printing actual big things? I couldn't pick that up. This is a giant Iron Man bust off of Thingiverse. Um, just search Iron Man bust on Thingiverse. It's like the Mark III. And this was, I maxed it out as big as possible. I had to do it diagonally and it was the shoulders that limited my size. For the size and the speed, this thing came out really good. I'm gonna blame some of the issues on the filament. I should have used a fresh roll of filament. I did not. I used some old red sun though I had sitting out, but it handled all the details wonderfully. I just had some issues taking the supports off and that's about it. Like it really, really came out nice because this, this model, it was supposed to be really small. I scaled this up a lot. So the way it was modeled definitely lent into this. Like some of the supports are really just stuck on there. Again, I'm really just gonna blame the filament. But like, this is cool. I could adjust some settings, adjust some tweaking, but the fact that I was able to one shot 
I think a proportionate scale. This is, honestly, this might be a little bit bigger than human, yeah. Huh. I am Iron Man. As for Creality Print right now, there's only two profiles in it, fast and standard, and it's all at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Obviously, you can go in and tweak that. I'm imagining they're gonna release more because if I switch over to the K1 Max or the K2 Plus, um, there's obviously more finer details on there. So they have to add more profiles. I'm, I'm waiting for that. But just for the standard quality, I, I like this. Like, I. I'm happy with it. So if you guys saw that other video I was talking about, you know I'm already gonna talk about these prints and these are for my new Iron Man suit, the new Mark 85 I am building. If you are interested in watching a start to finish full Iron Man suit build with all the tips and tricks, make sure you go subscribe and follow for that uh, build series. I'm very excited about it. It's gonna be, I'm trying to make the best Iron Man suit ever period. So yeah, stay tuned. Anyway, I am rough draft printing all of the parts. These aren't the final parts of the suit. They're going to be a lot nicer quality, but I was just pumping them out as quick as possible. And this printer just on its normal two walls, it handled everything great. Like this is perfect for post-processing. I know you can see the, like the diff the differentials in the color, but it is smooth there. It's again, it was that really, I was using the cheapest, oldest filament I could because these aren't the final parts, but then looking at the inner plates, it's handling all its edges perfectly. And the fact that I can one shot print these, like that's the point of large printers like this. I don't gotta cut anything up. So it's able to keep up very nicely. Then this was the back plate I printed for the same suit. And again, it handled all the shapes and colors, well, the shapes and different geometry very, very nicely. And just like I said, being able to one shot these, it's a game changer. Now I did send two final prints on this to really try and extract the quality. I did tweak some of the settings in, um, Creality print. I lowered the layer height a little bit. I slowed the speed down. I increased the wall thickness and I really wanted it to be like the nicest prints I could see off of this printer. First up was the print that's still literally on the build plate. This is the Mark I Iron Man helmet. So support removal, a little bit of ASMR for you guys, you know, tune in, kick back and uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ready, ready, ready. Butter. Um, yeah, these supports are literally just... That was amazing. This came out really good, actually. I was not expecting the supports to come out like that. They were just falling off my finger. This is just some giant arm filament brand from Amazon. I use the cheapest silks on Amazon possible. But uh, yeah, this is... This, this came out kind of nice. The second to last test print, just to really see how this looked. This is not from the Ender 5 Max. This is from my Creality, or, ha, my Bamboo Lab H2D. I did this on the highest quality I could, and this thing came out wonderful. This is a very, very good print, very high detail, again, for the Iron Man suit. But I decided, well, let's see what it looks like in silver on the Ender 5 Max. And again, same silver, this came out really good. I was very, very surprised with how this came out. I'm gonna be honest, guys. Just seeing it sit there on the build plate when it was done before I removed the supports. And uh, if you saw my Instagram story, I literally just pulled it off of the supports. But yeah, this came out, this came out really good. Comparing the like shapes and little details between the two, honestly, they're pretty indistinguishable. Um, there is a little bit of like salmon skin on the silver. That could just be a temperature thing. But as, as far as the accuracy between the two printers, like I would be very, very happy with, uh, I'd be very, very happy with these two prints. Like it's great that I can do a very high quality print, but at a distance for cosplay, this thing looks sick. So overall, what do I think about this printer? Do I recommend it? What is the competition? Would I recommend something else? For this price point and build volume, I don't think there's anything that competes with it right now. If you're doing open air filaments, if you're doing PLAs, if you're you know, honestly doing PETGs as well, uh, you can print those open air, just PETGs gotta be careful with. Uh, don't you know, do it in your room. So yeah, 400 cubed, it is $7.99 online right now, which is the same price currently as the K1 Max. However, the K1 Max is 300 cubed, so you're losing 100 cubed, obviously, and uh, the quality is comparable. This was literally printed on my K1 Max last night 
at the same time I was printing it on the uh, Ender 5 Max. Now my K1 Max has seen a lot of abuse, a lot more hours in it than this thing, but I'd say that the Ender 5 Max is definitely printing better than it currently. There is a lot more artifacting and salmon skin on this. My K1 Maxes have been through the ringer. So if you're okay with that quality drop, or not the quality drop, if you're okay with the size drop, you do get an enclosure, you get a camera, you get a couple more features with the K1 Max, including the multicolor upgrade kit, the CFS upgrade kit. I think it's like $80 right now. You can throw that on your K1 Max and get a 300 cubed multicolor printer. However, from what I've seen on Reddit, there are some things about the K1 Maxes. People are having some issues with the upgrade kit. Hopefully Creality patches that. It all seems to be firmware based, but it is an option where there isn't that Creality based multicolor printing for the Ender 5 Max. So for the same price, you lose the 100 cubed and you but you get the enclosure and a couple other features. But again, if you're just printing big and printing PLAs and stuff, I would do the Ender 5 Max over the K1 Max. Ender 5 Max K1 Max. Yeah. God, there's so many, too many names. Now, if you go up to $1,329, uh, over what, $500 more, you get the Creality K2 Plus, which is still smaller than this. It is 350 by 350 by 350. However, it is already upgraded to accept a CFS. You don't need to buy anything extra. It is a heated build chamber and it does all the stuff the K1 Max does, just a little bit bigger, a little bit better, but it's still smaller than this. So that is your other option in the extreme end direction and it's smaller than this thing. So I just wanted to put those two Creality options out there as the only like large Core XYs right now that are enclosed and versus this thing that's just a big Core XY. And I definitely do want to mention the Elegoo Neptune 4 Max. I am currently testing it. Some problems here and there, like my old Ender 4 Max. <laughs> Neptune 4 Max is my god. I finally got it printing nice. There are good prints off of it. I have had some adhesion issues. That's why my bed is flipped, but then that is a bed slinger. It is significantly cheaper than this, but it is a larger print volume than this. It is 425 by 425, I believe. And it is much bigger, but now it's a bed slinger. It cannot print as fast and reliably as a Core XY. And looking at the quality of it, I haven't broken it off the supports yet. I'm gonna save that for the Neptune 4 Max video about the same. I really can't notice anything crazy that it A, one did better. The overhangs all look the good same. Now, Neptune 4 Max, this did do really good. I am very surprised with the quality of it, but again, it was a lot slower print than what I was able to get off of the Ender 5 Max. So if it was between getting uh, two Elegu Neptune 4 Maxes, 439, uh, what? Uh, oh my God, math. $880, my God, my brain just stopped right there. So $880, I can get two giant bed slingers that so far I've had a little bit of reliability issues with or getting something that is going to print quicker, take up actually a little less real estate because now you don't have the bed going back and forth and has proven more reliable. Um, I would still do the Ender 5 Max just for the speed and the fact that you can enclose it a lot easier than something like a giant bed slinger. So guys, in closing, yes, I would recommend this printer so far. I haven't gotten thousands of print hours on it, but it is proving reliable so far. And if you guys follow more build videos, especially that new Iron Man build series, I am gonna be utilizing this as I print parts really fast to adjust scaling and test things out. So this is going to get utilized in my fleet of printers and there will be more on this. But right now there's literally nothing that would stop me from recommending this printer. I did not have any issues with it. It was easy to set up. It prints reliably. The prints are nice. The user interface is nice. And I just kind of like it. If you do already have an Ender 5 Max, please leave some comments down below about how you've been enjoying it. Have you had any issues with it? Have you run into any faults or weird things with it? Or is it just a pretty good PLA, normal standard printer? And if you don't have one yet, please leave some comments down below, some questions. You guys know I read all of them and I will do my best to respond to as many as possible. And if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. This way you stay up to date on everything, printer reviews, build projects, new Iron Man suit, Iron Man suits, Iron Man suits, that thing. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.